What agonies we suffered in those days in the prison camps. I was freezing to death and I was terrified. The bombings had stopped and there was a deadly silence over Crete. Only those of us who'd lived through this hell could imagine the nightmarish picture that was left behind. 1941. Rallying behind Mother Britain, Australia sends 17,000 troops to Greece to bolster the Allied effort against Germany. Within months, it's a campaign that years later will qualify as our second Gallipoli. Unlike the tragic Turkish campaign of 1915, the Battle of Greece and Crete occupies a quiet corner of military history. A new book, Diggers and Greeks, aims to shed some light on this devastating conflict. The Gallipoli legend has reached mythical proportions in this country and has overshadowed all other campaigns. And yet the Greek campaign, which was the second Gallipoli, which had the second group of Anzacs to fight uh, together as one corps, have been ignored in our history books. Australian soldiers were sent on a very difficult and suicidal mission that put their lives at risk. Thousands dead, more than 5,000 in prison camps, Greece and Crete accounting for 83% of Australians captured in Europe. How is it that a war of such significance has not earned a single Australian medal for those who fought it? This campaign presents a lot of inconvenient truths. The truth is that Britain deceived Australia and didn't inform Australia about the real circumstances in Greece even though they had excellent intelligence because they wanted the Australians to agree to a campaign for good political reasons. The, the real situation in Greece was that the country was full of fifth columners, German collaborators and sympathisers who simply did not want to fight the Germans. With only meagre resources and ill-trained reservists to fall back on, the Anzacs were overwhelmed. Reports of huge losses soon filtered through to Australia and New Zealand. When people heard about the fate of their husbands and sons, they rioted. The acting Prime Minister even threatened to shut down the papers. And there was a picture of him in the papers saying, Hail Fadden, because uh, presenting him as a fascist and trying to suppress public opinion. Even more lives would have been lost, says Maria, if it were not for the Anzacs' warm and larrikin relationship with the Greek people. If it hadn't been for the Greek people who offered them shelter and support, they wouldn't have survived in enemy-occupied Greece. Often they were isolated and by themselves and disheartened and, and starving. And, these, and the Greek people hid them. They did all sorts of amazing things to, to support their allies, the Greeks. Marriages were made extraordinary friendships forged. We could learn a lot from studying these campaigns of how do you get on with people of another culture whose language and, and values you don't have in common, whose country is alien to you, you've never been there, and yet they were able to win them over and to work successfully together. I have come to the conclusion that the Australian soldiers who fought there deserve to be issued with a medal. It was never issued and these people feel very heartbroken about it and they feel that the, their country, their own country, have invalidated their war experience. The Australians on Crete earned a title meaning brave warriors, an honour rarely bestowed on foreigners. The Greeks understood exactly what these men had risked for a relationship that went well beyond the bounds of normal friendship.